Okay, so let's start the class. Um, just, just to make sure I, I was clear last time, when, when, for example, you have a string here, so you're going to drive oscillation. Okay, so you're going to see there will be a wave that will move at a given speed, but the material here, so here you have a bit, it's not going to move with it. So the medium does not move. Only the disturbance is moving, only the energy is moving. You know that you're going to have energy because here it, it could be shake, shaken, right? What I want you to see also is, so let's do it slowly, right? It's going to move at a, the speed, and then here it's going to be reflected. And what's happening here is that when the wave comes in, then it's going to be reflected. The reflected wave will interfere with the coming, the new coming wave. And because the wave can be at the same place at the same time, this is called interference. And what you get if you are shaking the string at the right frequency, you get what is called a standing wave. That's how we make music with a, a guitar, harp, violin, right? So you are actually you are not shaking this way, but you are plucking the string and you are making a standing wave. And this is because of interference. Okay, so we'll get back to that. The other thing I want you to see is that it's it's shaking here, but the shaking is perpendicular to the direction of propagation. So this is called the transverse wave. It's when the, the oscillation here is perpendicular to the, the propagation direction, the direction of propagation, like an electromagnetic wave works also the same way. And you see that little green bit here, it's not going anywhere. So this is transverse wave, because I know in the MCAT you have those conceptual questions, for example. And here, someone asked a question. So you see this, this is air molecules, and they, you learn in chemistry, as long as it's not zero Kelvin, so it's not the absolute temperature, they always have some kind of motion. They are moving, right? Because it's, it's a warm enough, and, and it's called a thermal motion. So nothing is happening there. Now, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm going to make it slow. I'm, I'm going to make a sound. So I'm going to press here. Maybe slow is too slow. But what you should see is that, first of all, the wave is moving, the disturbance is moving. And you see how the, 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 the air molecules now are shaking back and forth, back and forth. But the air here, you see that little molecule, maybe it's oxygen. You have 20% oxygen, 80% uh, nitrogen. That little molecule here, maybe it's nitrogen, it's not going anywhere, it doesn't go there. It's only the energy that is moving. So a sound wave, okay, it's a longitudinal wave because the shaking here, you see how, how those molecules are shaking? They are shaking in a direction parallel to the direction of propagation. So you have here, all the air molecules are compressed. And here it's, uh, so here you have compression in that area here. And there you have an expansion, compression, expansion, compression, and so forth and so on. Uh, at, at the very end, you have your eardrop that will be pushed and pulled, pushed and pulled at the same frequency. So that will send a signal to the brain, and your brain translate that as sound, which is uh, very mysterious to me. But um, if, if I put that at a normal uh, speed, that's what it looks like. The speed of sound is about 340 meters per second, 340 meters per second. So it means, it means in uh, five seconds, sound travels about one mile. Five seconds one mile so it's so much slower than light so when there is a thunderstorm outside first you see the lightning and then you hear the sound because lightning is light it goes so fast 
So you see the lightning and then you hear the sound. By, by finding the lag in time, you can find how far away is the thunderstorm so you know if you have to worry or not. So if you count one, two, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, between lightning and the sound, you know that the thunderstorm is one mile away and you don't have to be afraid, okay? If you cannot do one Mississippi, then you have to do something. <laughs> then then maybe it's not that safe. Are you supposed to like lie down? I, 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 when, when you have so many towers like here, I think you're fine because you have all this lightning rod. If, if you are na in nature and it's all flat, like if you are in Belgium and you have thunderstorm, yes, maybe you have to <laughs> crunch on, on the ground. You have to worry. So we, we talk about interference because a, a wave that happens because a wave, again, it's not like a building. Uh, it can be at the same place at the same time. So when they meet each other, they're going to they're gonna either reinforce each other, so that's called constructive interference, or they can destroy each other. That's destructive interference, right? So that's uh, because of Thomas... Uh, the, uh, uh, that's because it's a wave. So you see, they can. So if you have two waves, they meet. They can either reinforce each other, or if you have a a crest here meeting with a crew, then they they can kill each other out, and then they pass each other. So the the big experiment we talked about was um, the Thomas Thomas Young experiment, the two slit experiment, right? We already talked about that so much last time. But of course you have to do the experiment to understand how it works. But basically you have two slits here, you have a laser. So it's like you have two source now. The wave will interfere with each other. And I have put uh, in my announcements that the, there is a great video by the channel uh, Veritasium. I think it's called. So when they interfere constructively, so crest and crest, you can have a bright band. When they destroy each other, you have a dark band. So you have a series of dark and bright bands, right? And uh, in, in the video I share, he brings a huge box, right, to a beach in California. He has a prism, not, not a prism, he has just a small uh, two, two slit. He has two slit, of course, it's a two slit experiment. So a big black box, all closed, two slit under the sun, and people, they could watch those um, bright and dark bands, right? So if you really want to see what it looks like, watch the video. It's, um, it's shared in my post. So you might ask, how come those bright bands are, you know, they, they are not thin, okay, they spread out, that's because of diffraction. Remember, each time light goes through an opening, it will bend around the opening, so it will spread out, so that's diffraction. So if for the pop quiz I ask you what's the issue with resolution, it's because of diffraction. Right, you want to have to be able the resolution will be uh, the, the smallest distance you can tell things apart and you can define resolution also for a microscope and the resolution depends on two things the wavelength and the size of the opening so imagine the wavelength like a small particle if, if it's very very small it goes through the opening it's not going to feel anything so the resolution will be very good. If, if you have a big opening, same thing, the wavelength is not going to feel so much the corner and it, you don't have so much diffraction. Does it make sense? So if you want to see viruses, if you want to see DNA, you cannot use visible light. So you cannot use a cheap microscope. You have to buy an electron microscope because it turns out that electrons also behave like waves, they have wave properties, and they, I don't know, I had a picture here. See, you have, so that's visible light going through two slits, and you have that uh, 
pattern, but you can do the same thing with electrons. So electrons will behave also like um, like a wave. So you're gonna also have series of band bright and dark. So that was the Thomas Young. So what else can we do with it? Interference. Um, so this this is the same thing. You have uh, some math, but the math is just uh, geometry. Is just to find out the location of the next bright band. So you have one bright band here and you have another bright band there. You can use geometry to find its location. So if you have a question like that on, on the MCAT, it's just an equation. As long as you understand the concept, then everything else is math. So in physics, most important thing is to understand the concept. Then you do a drawing, you, you identify physical quantity, but then everything else is algebra. Not even uh, like algebra two at most, not even calculus, right? So we talked about that. There is one question today on the pop quiz. You see that if you do not hear any sound here, that's because the speakers are off by half a wavelength. So if they are off, shifted by half a wavelength, then you have a crest with a throw, crest here with a throw here or valet then it uh, cancel each other out and you're not going to hear any sound. So it's like a blind spot. If the speakers are off by your all wavelength or two wavelength or three wavelength, then you have crest to crest and the sound is very loud. Okay, so we talked about that. And what, now the last interesting thing about interference and applications, it's called the beats. So if you are in music, you, you know that phenomenon, phenomenon is that when you have two waves and you add them together, but they are just off frequency. Their frequency is a little bit off. So they do not have the same frequency. If, if you want to cancel out, like in this example here, we suppose both waves here to, to get that, uh, to get that, both waves here, they have the same frequency because they come from the same audio system. But now if you have 340 hertz, for example, and here you have 341 hertz, what's going to happen when they combine together, and you can you can do the, the math, you get beats. And what beats looks, sounds like? Let me get these things so they're a little bit different in frequency. You can strike them both at the same time. Can you hear the throbbing? That's a re that is the result of inter interference, and the phenomenon is called beats. All right. That only happens when there is a little shift in uh, frequency. So this is called beats. And, and you can do that. If you add that sine wave plus this sine wave, you get that, which is nothing here, high here. So, you go, uh, uh, uh. so these are called beats, beats here. You, you can have fun here and add wave, this wave plus that wave, you get this wave. Okay, and then standing waves. I want to talk about standing waves because it's about music. So when you have, and I show you that before, so let's go back to here, like it, let's make it slow. So the wave, what's gonna happen when I'm gonna oscillate, like let's make a pulse to see what's happening. So you see, it's gonna move. Okay, it has a speed that depends on the tension. And then it's going to come back. It's going to be reflected, right? So it's hard to see because I have some friction here. But let's do no friction. So it's moving forward. And then it's being reflected. You see that? And then it's going to be reflected again, right? So now look what's going to happen. I'm going to pulse. Look what's going to happen. 
when you're going to have incident wave interfering with a reflected wave. If I'm hitting the right frequency, you're going to get you're going to get what we call standing wave. So I'm going to try to do that. Look, 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 look. I'm trying hard here. It's being reflected, and now we got standing wave. Standing wave is what we get when you are playing music. Isn't that cool? So let me show you. I have another. Can show you that? So you have two waves interfering with each other, and if you have the right frequency, they will cons be constructive or destructive. Okay, so let's start. It's going to be slow. Okay, so you're making a sine wave or just a wave. Okay, so yes, it's a sine wave. So it's a driven system. Somewhere there, it's uh, shaking the string. So nothing special there. You see, it has a given speed. There is no interference yet. When it hits, the end, so it could be um, an end that does not move. Look, 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 look. You see how it's in interfering with itself? You see the blue one is the reflected wave. The, the red one is the incident wave. And at the end, what you get, you get a standing wave. And that happens only at given frequencies. We call that the resonance, right? And that's how we play music. So that could be a guitar, for example, that could be a violin, or that could be a harp. Okay, so this is also due to interference. I can make, a, so that will be close and close, that could be a guitar. I can make, a, I forgot the difference between a flute and a clarinet. I, I think that could be a clarinet. So the the one hand is free to move and it's also going to be reflected so this is the 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 one that comes in send incident wave then there will be one that is reflected so you see here that's your clarinet because one hand is free to move. May I still get a standing wave? See how it works? So I have another app here. So you have the green one coming in, the blue one being reflected, they're gonna interfere with each other and you have a standing wave. What does it mean standing? It seems to not go anywhere. It's just not moving, right? So the up and then down. These are called nodes, and these are anti-nodes here. Okay, so how, how do we relate that to music? Let me show you. I can have an harp. Can you see them? You see that? So depending on the tension in the string, you're going to have different uh, speed, okay? If you have a heavy chord, it's going to be um, more mass, so the, the speed will be less of the wave, but you have the standing waves here. So that's how the idea behind music, okay? So you have the first harmonic, the second harmonic, the third harmonic, but that's the idea. Let me show you in a guitar. I don't know if I have a guitar. I think I have a violin. Let's look at the violin here. Yeah, let's look at the first harmonic. So for um, the string, if you are playing a uh, um, music instrument, you know that those strings here are not equivalent to each other. It, it, the mass matters, okay? They are thick or they are thin, right? So it will, uh, depending on, on, on the mass, depending on how tight the, the string is, you have to adjust, it will make different speed. And once you have different speed, it will make different harmonics. 
right? So that's called the fundamental or the first harmonic, and it's a standing wave. What does it mean, the standing wave? It's an interference between a coming wave and a reflected wave. Okay, and then actually, you never hear that with a violent, or like uh, you will hear that with a tuning fork, for example. That will be very boring, okay, if you have that sound. Actually, it's a mix of several harmonics. And that's what you will you will hear the white the white wave from form and it's a mix of all the harmonics. So the pitch, the pitch is the frequency, but the timber that's what you hear. So you can tell apart a piano from a violin, for example. Right? The fundamental is just the first first harmonic, the first standing wave that you make. That's going to give you the pitch. So that's just the idea. Then you have also other instruments. So, for example, if you have a flute, a flute is is it open at both ends? I always forget the flute and the clarinet. Yeah, it's open at both ends. But you can still make waves interfere with each other. Except in that case, they are not waves on a string, they, they, they are sound waves, but they interfere with each other, and you see you get the first harmonic. Flute is pretty boring, right? I mean that kind of that's the first thing you learn in middle school, right? The, the first music instrument that you play. And then you combine all the harmonics together. So here it's open, here and here it's open. So they are all standing waves, right? Now, if, if you have other instruments, so let's see, clarinet. Clarinet, uh, clarinet is closed at one end and open at the other end. So same thing as that kind of piano. You see, it's uh, attached here, but here it can move. So that will be one fourth of a wavelength. But it's a standing wave. Do you understand the idea? It's also due because of interference and resonance. Because those here will vibrate only at given frequencies, not any frequency, one single frequency. This is one fourth of the wavelength, okay? And it will vibrate only at a given frequency, otherwise it will destroy each other and nothing will happen. So I just have an example here. So sometimes you will do those. Um, oh, I did my... Um, organ pipe. Okay, this is a demonstration, demonstration of, of organ, organ pipe. pipe. No, but that's the same idea. Here I have moved that. So you see here you have a tuning fork. Okay, it's gonna sound it's, it's gonna sound one pitch, so one frequency, one tunic fork is one frequency. The wave, the sound wave, it's gonna be inside that tube. So it's open at what one end, close at the other end. And only for some uh, size of the tube, you will have resonance, right? You can make those standing waves. So this is resonance. You see, you have that standing wave. And then it goes down, goes down. And then you're going to have the second harmonic, the second standing wave. You see? So that will, oh my ear, so that will be a clarinet, for example. I have one video that I have recorded myself. I just look for it.
Mm, can you see something that I will have made? Uh, Am I? Yeah, I am in the right frequency. Oh, this this was me. Look at that when I was teaching lab. So that's 10 hertz, the first harmonic. You see, you have a string. So you see how it doesn't move, right? And then I'm going to increase the frequency twice the frequency. And now you're going to see two bombs. So that will be the second harmonic. And it's a standing wave. And it's very fun because if you pinch here, it doesn't move, so it's called a note. And then you go to three times the fundamental, so that will be the third harmonics. And look at that, one, two, three. Okay, so that's the third standing waves. And then you go to multiply by four. Uh, yeah, multiply by four, the first one, so 40 hertz. One, two, three, four. That will be the fourth harmonics. And each time you have a different frequency. This is 40 hertz. That's going to be 50 hertz. One, two, three, four, five. Isn't that cool? And these are called nodes. So if you pinch it, you're not going to feel anything, right? And these are anti nodes. So these harmonics, they have to do with resonance right you can oh okay another one that i saw it's called the ruben do you see something ruben the the one with fire interference bits or oh, this one it's called the ruben tube You see the standing waves? You can visualize them. So you see when he goes low frequency, when he goes low frequency, you have less bump. Higher pitch, you have more bumps. So you visualize the standing waves. This is because inside the tube, you are making standing waves, which means some places the air is compressed you have more oxygen so more fire and some places there is nothing okay so no compression no expansion so you have less fire because there is no oxygen so you are making standing waves with the sound and you compress the air or, or expand the air and that's why you have more or less fire So you increase the pitch, you see how many bumps you have, you have more bumps. Low pitch, you have more bumps. Isn't that cool? So for those who are in music, I will uh, post that in uh, Canvas if you are interested. Again, you can make standing waves. Okay, for, for, for this demonstration, I have my Able Assist and Direction and Bound mode. mode. It's the lowest so first, frequency mode. Wave. It's called the first, the first overtone. And Second this one, if you'll one, notice, is going, going twice, twice as fast but what I want you to as see is that the you fundamental have to shake mode. At the right frequency. It has you do not a get node that's exactly so halfway between Parker and or, me. Or and that's a node so where, where there's approximately no motion going on. And so if you go faster... If I can get I one of the higher modes. I think, I think that's four. So you see that he does not shake it at the right frequency, you will get nothing, right? This comes from the, uh, I have the links in my canvas. I like I like those uh, this website because he uses the same book as um, I, I told you to get, the Cutnell and Johnson. It's good if you are taking the MCAT. So let's talk about resonance. So what happened if that, when you, you have a system that can oscillate, right? That is flexible and you shake it, you drive it at the right frequency. We call that the resonance frequency. You can get very, very high amplitude. So you can get, hey, welcome back. You can get standing waves, right? 
So it's like when you are falling in love, for example, I call that resonance. You go off the roof, right? Or if you talk to someone to a very touchy topic that you're not supposed to talk about, boom, right? that person goes off the roof. This is also resonance. So uh, the best example we always give students happened, uh, I think it was after the war or during the war, I forgot World War II, when Washington State, State, State. So they just had built a new bridge, brand new bridge in Washington State in Tacoma. So it was called the Tacoma Bridge. And the engineer, I guess, they skipped physics 2054 and they forgot about resonance. And here, just when they opened the bridge, very strong wind was uh, driving the bridge back and forth, back and forth, like you are pushing someone on on a swing, right? If you do it the right way, it's going to go higher and higher and higher. That's called resonance. And, and of course, you know what happened. So the, the frequency from the bridge was at the same frequency than the So very famous. So it turns out that, for example, if if you have enough voice, if you have the right amplitude, and you you sing at a single frequency, the resonance frequency of a glass, there has to be crystal. So it okay, you you increase the frequency and you can break it, right? And there was a video from the Mythbuster, and uh, they did it, and it's true. But but you have to be you have to be able to um, really provide enough, hold it, and enough enough amplitude, right? Enough um, power, boom. See that? So there is this uh, amazing singer. I don't know if you know her because. Um, uh, maybe you are too young, but she's the queen of jazz, okay? A very famous singer. Her, her name is Ella Fitzgerald, of course, very famous. And they, they used her for a commercial for Memorex. So what was Memorex? It was back then, when we didn't have the technology that we use today, they have magnetic tape. Okay, so you, you will have to record the voices or the sound on, on uh, magnetic tape. And, and their point is that their memorex, their magnetic tape is so good that you could record the voice of Ella Fitzgerald and still be able to break a glass. It's a very famous um, commercial. Let's no, we don't have sound anymore. Very famous. I think she was called the first lady of song, okay, the queen of jazz. Can the amplified voice of voice of Gerald 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 Believe it. Ella Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald on MRX cassette, cassette tape with MRX to oxide. Can MRX shatter the glass? Now we ask, is it is it, or is or it, is it Okay, very, very famous. So if you are in marketing, very famous. Uh, and I mean, marketing students always study that. Memorex, is it live or is it a Memorex, right? Because you cannot tell, uh, you, can, you cannot tell the difference. It's a very famous bit. I mean, 
the beautiful music, okay? She's uh, very famous. So resonance, for example, let's take another example. Oh, 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 okay, I have one which is very good, let's say. Resonance, resonance. Okay, you, you're gonna help me to tell me what happened there. I think it's uh, uh, from from Brazil. Very creative. So what happened? Yeah. Yes. No, 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 no. We can. But you, you have to uh, to be able to have a lot of power in your voice. And so what they do, they take a crystal crystal glass, they, they wet the finger and they go. So if you are a professional singer, you hear the, and then you, you reproduce the same pitch and you should be able to break the glass. But not only you need to have the right pitch, but you need to have also the right amplitude. V very good, yes. But usually it's very high pitch. You, you, did you, you know? But you have to use crystal, you goes, and then. But you have to be a professional singer. So what happened here? How come she she was not able to break the? She couldn't uh, match the resonance. No, no, no. So, uh, yeah, it could be that she doesn't match the resonance, but in that case, it's something else. So there is liquid inside, but. It was sealed, okay, but that's not the reason. Let's say she has enough power in her voice. How come she was not able to break it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but that's mm, too complicated. S something more simple, simple than that. So they, they all break, right? Why, why do they break? Because glass can be broken, right? You, you try to stretch glass, it doesn't work, right? So what, what is it that cannot be broken? Plastic, right? Isn't that a smart connection? <laughs> so it's, uh, they made like a vodka, I don't know what's inside, uh, plastic, so that's why. I, I thought that was very smart. Interestingly, also in the earthquakes application, mm -hmm. so how come you have some buildings, some buildings that will collapse if you have an earthquake, and some, some buildings won't collapse? So it depends on the height of the building also. It's because, you know, they will uh, react to only one frequency. So if the earthquake is producing a wave, I think they are called the uh, um, uh, surface wave, right? They are the most dangerous wave because they are the wave that move at the surface of the earth and it has the right frequency, the same frequency as the building, the building will break. Some, some buildings don't have that frequency, so they will not collapse. Isn't that interesting? So that's what he's showing there. Este es un piso y esto es una columna. Entonces, los periodos varían en función de la masa. Este tiene otro periodo. Este tiene otro periodo. Es otra frecuencia, ¿verdad? They all have the same mass, but they don't have the same resonance frequency. El periodo se altera, ¿de acuerdo? Este es una casa de dos que tiene un periodo muy corto. Oh, estos son los edificios que tienen más rigidez y uno de ellos tiene amortiguador. Si yo los excito ¿De acuerdo? Este que tiene una vuelta moviendo se para rápidamente y este sigue vibrando. Entonces, si yo quiero tirar un edificio en la colonia Roma, lo excito, lo excito con las aceleraciones de la colonia Roma que son como dos segundos. Entonces hago esto. Vean los edificios. ¿Ves cómo este no vibra? No vibra. ¿Y este no vibra? Las casas de la colonia Roma. Entonces, depende de la resonancia. Esa es la idea. Si yo quiero perjudicar a los ricos de las Lomas, 
lo hago con un periodo muy corto y hago esto. So this one moves now. Los edificios altos no se afectan. And the other se one I'll say. Esa es la idea, esa es la dinámica talks? de las estructuras. Entonces lo prudente es que los edificios no se muevan como el suelo. So TikTok sometimes have good stuff, okay? Not not only bad stuff. <laughs> so here you have another uh, uh, tube, and that's also resonance. You see you see the standing wave, and they they use the styrofoam. So it's a tube here, and you are making standing waves at different uh, frequency. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, here. Something yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, a club. <laughs> <laughs> so you can visualize those uh, standing waves also on TikTok. Um, I have another one I wanted to show you. You can, you can do that with uh, tuning forks. So two tuning for 440 hertz. You see that? He only only strikes this one, but this one has the same frequency. Okay, so it's resonance frequency, so it will also vibrate. You have to put a microphone. He stop, and here you can hear that. Isn't that amazing? That's a resonance microphone. You see that? So that's resonance. So is that the sound wave from one is transferred to the other? And exactly. It and then it also vibrates. Yes, but only if they have the same frequency. Same. So you you have different uh, tuning fork. So it has to be a f it's it's a A. For those who have a music uh, musical ear, which I don't, for for T hertz, I think it's a right. Could you not have like like a recycling of like the sound wave if you had them like in a circuit and you hit one, wouldn't they all start to vibrate together? Yeah, yeah, they will all vibrate together, that, like like a like a spring. Yeah. Now, by the way, it could be like this one. Here I have yeah, in this demonstration, demonstration four sets, sets of rods, of rods of different You lengths. mean uh, transfer to each other? Yes, be, be, especially steel. because tuning, tuning for now, the vi the vibrate is, like this, so it's not spread out in a three rod, dimension, right? So they the can transfer to each other. Respond? Will they all start to yes. vibrate? Well, yeah. the vibrations will be different depending on the number. So you see, only that one picked up the. this one. The matching Only this rod one, because they have matching resonance the frequency. Steady. They have a matching frequency. Uh, they like to vibrate I, with. When I set this into oscillation, oscillation. and set the vibrations through the base at a certain, certain frequency, 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 frequency of this rod, rod which, which was picked up by this rod, so it has the has same natural, natural frequency, frequency as this one, one. and it would be able to vibrate. The rest of these rods have different natural frequencies, which are not equal to the frequencies of these rods, and therefore they are not vibrate. Isn't that interesting? So a, a lot of demo you can do also in um, in two dimension, right? You can have resonance. Okay, so let's move to the next. Uh, so then, if you want, you if you are interested by music, you can uh, you can go and here you have some math, some equations, but we don't have time for it. But once you understand the concept. When you see it with your eyes, always try to see a demo, then it's not that hard to understand. Okay? Yes. Yeah. Ooh. I don't know if we can, uh, if we vibrate, that's, that I don't know. 
what, what I know, we have a psychological <laughs> resonance frequency. Like you talked to someone about a few months ago about the vaccine, you know, for example, just, just an example, some people will go off the roof for one reason or the other one. Okay, so that's a resonance frequency. When you fall in love, it's a resonance frequency. Now, can you vibrate? It's a, it's a good question. Like someone on a swing will have a resonance frequency because you have to push at the right frequency, so it's going to higher and higher and higher. Okay, I will uh, look it up and I find something interesting, I will uh, post it. So Someone share, I don't know if that person is here, but someone share something very interesting about the cancer, right? Na nanoparticle. So for example, if you have nano nanotube, nanotube, okay, it's carbon tube, okay, so it's a conductor, right? You have those conductors inside the tumor, God forbid, in your brain. And then you have a changing magnetic field, right? The changing magnetic field will induce will induce a current in those nanotubes. And it's supposed to destroy the tumor. But um it's 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 I I think from my point of view it looks to looks better than chemo because chemo for the brain tumor doesn't work that well. Like you have like a one year survival rate. So I share that article with you. Okay, geometrical optics. So as you might have guessed, you know my watch stopped in the eighties. <laughs> That's why I have those pictures one of my favorite songs. So I have demos, but I forgot the demos. So I, uh, I apologize for that. So we have seen the wave properties of light. Now we're gonna look at the, uh, the, the optics, right? So you, it, the light can be refracted. So this is called refraction. And that happens because when light, remember, if I try to trick you for the final and I tell you, you know, gamma rays, they have high frequency, high energy. So, of course, they have to move faster. You say, no, 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 no. All the waves in the electromagnetic spectrum, they all move at the same speed. If you increase the frequency, you have to decrease the wavelength, such as when you multiply them together, wavelength and frequency, you get to the same number, the speed of light, right? In in vacuum, they all have the same speed, but in a piece of glass here, what's going to happen is that light will be refracted because light will slow down, and blue will slow down more than red, okay? Because it, they, it, they don't have the same wavelength. So refraction, I'm going to show you why, but it happens because light will slow down when it goes through a piece of glass. You all know that light can be reflected, and we have seen that light can be diffracted. So it means light moves like it's blind, and as soon as it's going to feel a corner, it will bend around the corner, right? So you see, instead of going a straight line here, it's going to bend around the corner. Thanks to the refraction phenomenon, we're going to be able to make lenses, right? So you have diverging lenses, that's the one I have, that's for people who cannot see far. So if I remove my glasses, you are all fuzzy here, I don't see anything. But if I look close, I can see, so I am short-sighted. So these are the expansive lenses, and they are called diverging lenses. And I will uh, explain why to use, you use those for, for my, my, uh, my condition, being short-sighted. And then you have converging lenses that will be magnifying glass. And those are for people, usually when we get older, everything gets stiffer, including the muscle in the eyes. So we cannot accommodate the same way that we used to. So now you need reading glasses and they are just magnifying glasses. So those are very easy to make. You go to CVS, you, you buy them for a few dollars, they are very cheap. Those here are very expensive because you have to adjust the curvature here. That will be expensive to do. 
So I, I had, uh, it's okay, I took a picture of my demo and I will make a video at home of the demo, I just forgot. But you see when you have a piece of glass here, light, and that's just red light, okay? That's why you don't have a rainbow. Red light will go and it will bend here, okay? It will be refracted. It doesn't go in a straight line. And then it will be refracted again when it leaves the piece of glass. So why is it doing that? Because as it gets inside the glass, it's going to slow down. So let me explain. Like, um, for example, here, imagine you have people holding hands. Can you imagine that or no? Right? That's one person, one person, one person, one person. You are looking with a drone. You have a drone and you're looking at those persons from, from the top, from above, and they're all holding hands and they walk on the pavement. So holding hands here like kids. You don't want to lose your kids, so you ask the kids to hold hands. And then all of us, you don't. Here you have grass or mud. So what's going to happen? This one is going to be slowing down because it's he's or she is walking in mud so which one will go faster that one right so do you see how they all bend right does it make sense so if you imagine it's like, it's like marching bands so they march 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 this one is slowing down so this one is still going fast so it's like a turn right so they they turn in this direction and that happens because light will move slower in um, in uh, in glass for example so if this is glass or this is plastic the, the 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 light will move slower so it will bend so i have a app to show you so this is refraction refraction and uh, let me show you what it looks like. Refraction is called bending light. You see light move in a straight line, the vacuum, when it enters some uh, glass, it's glass, it will bend. And there is an equation, it's called Snell law, between that angle here and this angle there. It's a very simple equation. We're not going to look at the equation, we don't have time, but it's not uh, hard to understand. So some part of the light will be refracted, some part of the light will be reflected. So let me ask you something. Um, is it red? Is it the same color here when it's refracted? This is red. What, what color is that? That's red. So the same color. Because it's the same color, it's going to be the same frequency okay the color depends on the frequency so this is red this is red so it's the same frequency so if if the speed goes down but the frequency stays the same what's what's what has to go down as well the wavelength okay let's see if it's true so the color does not change if you if you see if, if that sign over there, it's red, coming toward us, it go through the glass or the window, it's still red. So the frequency does not change. But the light, when it goes through the window's glass, okay, the wavelength will go down. So you see how you have smaller wavelengths? So the distance between two crests, the distance between two crests here is the wavelength. Here it gets smaller because the speed gets smaller. The amount by which the speed decreases, okay, it will be the speed of light divided by what we call the index of refraction. So for glass, the index of refraction is 1.5. That means that the speed of light inside that material will be divided by 1.5. So the light slows down. Do you understand? And by the way, if you if you look here, if if you do the marching band, no, no, try. 
for the sake of this problem, right? For the sake of some of us. So you see here, you see how it moves, move, move, move. This one slows down, right? Because it's gas. But this one keeps going fast, so that's why. Understand how it works? So that good? So you go from fast to slow. Now, something very interesting. Uh, so what, what, uh, what's the question to ask? If you go from fast to slow, can you go from slow to fast, right? And yes, because you can look inside the swimming pool, you can see the fishes. So light from the fish go from the water, which is slow, to the air, which is fast. So let's see. If I go from water, say, to air so the, that's the fish here right and here i'm located there so i can see the fish but where do i see the fish here so this is me looking looking at the swimming pool i don't know why the swimming pool would be up and this is the air but but the image of the fish will be there right well I, I, don't worry about that i'm going to get back to that but look what's going to happen here I, I should make um no it's fine look look what's gonna happen Ooh. you see here there is no problem light can escape i go from slow to fast some of it is refracted so it can escape the water or the glass some of it is reflected look look what's gonna happen here can can the light escape no it's it's um it's trapped inside. So this is called total ref reflection. And that only, only happens, only happens when you go from slow to fast. It doesn't happen when you want to go from fast to slow. So that means you will be, if someone is trying to look at you, you will be invisible in that case. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Okay, so I, I have the fish. I I have the picture of your fish. Okay. I I made that. Okay, so look look at that. You have the fish, right? So you have the light from the fish. So you have some light of the fish will go in this direction, some light of the fish. You will have no problem if you look at the fish from above. But look at the light coming from the fish here. It's going to be refracted. It goes from slow to fast. From your point of view, because your eyes and your brain didn't take physics 2054, uh, it thinks, you think that the light, or your brain thinks that the light comes, uh, uh, follows a straight line. You're going to miss the fish because you're going to see a virtual fish here. You're not going to see the actual position of the fish. You see that? So it's going to be, you, you're going to, see, yes, it's going to be lower of, of what you see. So if you try to catch it, you're going to miss, you're going to miss it, right? Yeah. And you miss the fish. But then when you get um, some practice, you know that you have to go a little bit further down and then you get the fish so whatever you see the fish you go a little bit uh, uh, further down right? so here we're going to see a ghost fish here it's called a virtual image just above the real fish so that's that's because of refraction so you see here when you look at that pen it's in inside the water it seems that the the pen is broken that that because of refraction because our brain, our brain, you know, doesn't doesn't know to go this way. Okay, our brain thinks that the light comes from that direction, so your brain sees the fish here. So your brain is tricking you. So that's how we have all those opti optical illusions. You know that that's what they use. So for example, here, the 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 feet here, 
from from the lady goes here and then it will be refracted but the 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 the, the image of the fish of the feet will be here so she will look like she has very short legs right and 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 you see that when you are you are in the ocean like uh, in August when it's uh, crystal clear you look at your feet and something is wrong okay it's like your your legs are shorter and that and that's because of uh, refraction <laughs> the bending light so when you go from slow to fast it's going to be refracted to world and when you go from uh, when you go from sorry fast to slow it's going to be refracted in this direction but when you go from slow to fast slow to fast is going to be refracted away okay so you you the best way to understand how it works is to play with this um, simulation so to to go back to the total reflection uh we we talked about that last time but um for example, in optical optics, uh, uh, fiber optics, for example, fiber optics, you see how you are trapping the light inside the fibers. So those fibers here are made of glass. And when you have a laser, it cannot escape. It's going to be trapped inside. So this is called total reflection. And that only happens when light goes from slow to fast. So here, no problem, it can escape. Okay, so if you are located here, you can see the source. But if it makes an angle, like if it goes through a threshold, then the light is trapped inside the material and cannot escape. So that's how um optic fibers work okay and why why do we use them because you remember i told you the frequency of visible light visible light is 10 to the 14 hertz that means you can transport 10 to the 14 bits per second so it, it you have more information more information to be sent during the same time than radio waves just quietly you just correlated data to light no the frequency oh like when you want to um, transfer information using a wave so it could be radio wave or it could be visible light you can transport more information with visible light than with radio wave because there is a higher frequency so there is a a rule that the frequency is about the number of bits zero and one you can send per unit uh, second. So radio waves have a lower frequency, so you cannot send as many bits, zero and one. So that's why they are using optic fibers. Okay. Fibers, it's it's more expensive, but but you send more data, so it's gonna go faster, exactly. Very expensive. Yes. So another thing is that since you are in marine biology, I don't know if you know, but in the ocean, in ocean, you have something called a sound channel. So it means here, the speed of sound here is faster because it's not as um, faster. And, and because, because why? I forgot because why? Uh, because the temperature, because the temperature is warmer. Right, so here it's faster. Here it's faster because you have more pressure. So in between, it's gonna be slower. Okay, so slower wave in in that part here inside the ocean, and that's called the sound channel. So it works like light, except it's sound. So here the 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 sound will move faster because it's warmer water here the sound will move faster because it's more pressure from all all the water so here we have what it's called the sound channel and that's how whales communicate with each other because when they're going to make a sound the sound does not spread out and the energy is not lost in three dimension like we have learned with light it's going to be trapped 
right? So it cannot escape. So all this energy is being carried along over a very, very, very long distance. So if you have like a whale, I don't know, in uh, Arctic, in the Arctic, you know, Northern Hemisphere, maybe you have a whale chilling out next to Brazil, they can talk to each other because the sound, you know, is uh, not uh, dissipated. Isn't that cool? Right. So there is this book called uh, Red October and uh, in, in the book, and there was a, there was a great movie called Red October, and and in the in the book they talked how during I think it was the Cold War, you know, the submarine they learned to travel inside the sound channel. So that means the enemy they could not they could not detect the the submarine. And when the book was written, you know, I think the CIA or whatever, they, they start to be worried that there was a leak, but there was no leak. It's just the person who wrote the book was very smart and figured it out, right? That the submarine, they like to travel in that sound channel so they are not heard. Isn't that interesting? But they travel in sound channel waves, I mean, waves or... Yeah, the same sound channel, because there are, I, I don't know, you have, you are the one in marine biology, so you have to know, I don't know where is exactly the sound channel, but there is a sound channel, because you can Google it, where is the sound channel. Like mm -hmm. At a certain depth. But yes, exactly, at a certain depth, and I, I'm sure the depth will change, right, because it depends on the temperature here and depends yeah. on the pressure there, but, but they can figure it out. Okay, so this is called a trapped light. So for example, here the, the whale can see the squid because the light from the squid, the light carries its image, cannot escape, right? So it's gonna bounce back, it's called total reflection, so then it can see the squid there. You can see also the airplane. Maybe it will freak out, right? It's weird. Now, can can the airplane see 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 the squid? No, because the light from the squid cannot escape, right? But but they will be able to see the whale because you have the, the 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 light wave coming from there and being reflected, so you can you can see the whale. So is it because the light is not like properly So it depends. It depends on the. The angle, the incident angle. So if you have a small incident angle, then the light can escape. And then once you hit like a, a, a specific, you can, there is a equation for that, boom, it cannot escape. It's trapped inside. See that? So that's why, that's what makes a diamond so shiny. Um, there was a very good uh, movie called uh, Blood Diamond, right? But by the way, you know the when when they because because they exploit, they they they, they have slaves, right, to extract the diamond and they use kids. By by the way, we we talk always about the the, the electric car, but to have a ballet electric car, you need to have um, lithium and cobalt, right? right? Where, where 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 do they come from? Like, for example, you have cobalt. Cobalt from, is from Congo, I think, and they are using slaves, kids, to extract them. So, I know, it's it's not better. And and lithium, I think they use a Chile in Chile, the South America, so they have to use a lot of water, which is very bad for environment. So I don't know, I don't think that uh, batteries are so environmental friendly, and then you have to recycle them, right? You have all this pollution. So anyway, uh, that was a very good movie. So in a diamond, what makes them so special is that the light, okay, from, from outside, it's gonna be trapped inside the diamond. So it's gonna be reflected again and again and again. And when it's, ref it's uh, reflected so much, it's also gonna be, gonna be refracted when it comes out and it, it can, uh, you, you, you can have like the rainbow. So you have pink diamond, blue diamond, you have beautiful diamond. And that's because in a diamond, the index of refraction is so large, right? So it's very easy to trap 
the light inside. That that's what makes a diamond so shiny. So if you want to make sure it's not a blood diamond, you can buy zirconium and nobody will tell the difference, right? Unless they have a special skill to analyze, but you don't tell the difference in the, between the real diamond and zirconium. And at least they are not bloody. So it's called total reflection. Now, if you have white light, you see how blue light is more bent, it's more refracted than red light. So that's how you have the rainbow. And that's uh, Newton figure it out. So yes, because of the wavelength. So the blue, blue, blue has a smaller wavelength than red. So the change in speed will not be the same. So it will be it will not be refracted the same way. That's how you have the rainbow. And uh, so let's go back to my. It's really in a nutshell. But once you understand the concept, it's it's not that hard. Uh, let's look at the speed. You see the speed of light here is 75% the speed of light in air. So it means when light goes through a medium like glass or, or plastic, it, the light will slow down. In that case, by 25%. Here in air, it's about 100% uh, the speed of light. Inside there, it's going to be less. How much less? This is water, by the way. So it's going to be the speed of light divided by 1.33. So it means it will be 75% the speed of light in uh, in water. Yeah, no, no, that's a good question. The, the angle of incidence would do not change the speed, but it changes the, um, the refract the, the refracted angle. So if I go back to air, so let's go back to air here. And so you see here it goes a straight line. The speed is just one C. If you go in water, you see the speed is less, 75% than there. What changes here is the angle. So it goes straight line. Here it's refracted, refraction, more refraction, more refraction. But you see here, you cannot trap, light can be trapped when you go from fast to slow. It can be trapped only if you go from slow to fast. So here, so what I want to show you is that because you have refraction, then you have what it's called a converging lens. Okay, you see how light will converge at one single point? That point is called the focal length. So this is called a magnifying glass. Okay, so that will be the reading glasses that are very cheap that you buy at the dollar stores. They are very cheap to make. You can buy them for $1. I mean, now it's not $1 with inflation, it's 1.25, right? 25% more. But that's a converging lens. You see that? Then here, you have the opposite diverging lens. So these are the expansive one, the one that I have, okay? It's uh, for people who are short-sighted, who cannot see far. So this is... This is uh, diverging. Isn't that cool? Okay. Now, if I have white, white light, what can I do? I can do, I can do the rainbow. You see, that's a prism. It's white light, so it's not only just one frequency. It's all frequency mixed together. And when it goes through glass, now it's not going to be refracted the same by the same amount because the speed of light depends on the frequency. See how it works? Now, if I go back to my slides here, 
that's that's the that's the demo I wanted to show you and I forgot it at home. But you see, so this is one frequency. You see how light is refracted? Now this is a converging lens, like a magnifying glass. And the light coming from very, very far away will focus at one point. And then you have a diverging lens. You see the light will diverge away. And it seems to come from a single point. Okay? See how it works? Now, just to want to... Oh, by the way, for example, a mirage. How does a mirage work? So it's very hot. You are in the desert. And this is uh, the sand, right? So because airs, you can think of air as made of layers, right? So here it's going to be very warm. And here it's going to be cooler. Light from the sun will be refracted. Okay, here you have a total reflection, and your brain thinks that the blue from, from the sky comes from a straight line. So your brain is going to see the sky here. So you think that you have water, you start to run, you are so happy, you jump, and there is nothing there, and you break your head. It's like when you are uh, driving and it's very hot outside. It looks like you have water on the pavement, right? But but of course, it's not there. This is because of refraction. Sometimes it even keeps moving. Yes, yes. Why? Why is it moving? That's a good point. Why is it moving? Because the air is moving as well. That's why la uh, the stars, the star seems to twinkle, 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 little star, no, 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 no. That's because the atmosphere comes into layers, right? And, and the layer move relative to each other. That's what make uh, a star twinkle. I don't know if I have a video about twinkle of stars, but uh, it's uh, super cool. Yeah, you, Hi you, friends, you the I'm sure, I'm sure the layers of the star end up at last at different, different temperature. temperature. The cooler the layers, layers are more dense, dense compared, compared to the, to the warm, warm layers. layers. So, the so the atmosphere is made up of made many layers, layers having, having different, different optical, optical density. density. Now when now we when look we up look at the stars, the, stars, the light the is coming from the star. When light enters the atmosphere, it undergoes refraction. Because light because is going, light is going from, vacuum from vacuum to the atmosphere. To the atmosphere. As, we As we discussed, discuss, the, atmosphere the atmosphere is made up of many layers, layers having different, different densities. densities. The bending, the bending of, light of light also takes place at the boundaries of these layers. layers. So the light the from the star, star that reaches our eyes has gone, has gone through, through many, many, many refractions. refractions. If we trace if back the light, light the star the is at a different position from its actual position. As you can, As see, you can see, the apparent, the apparent position, position of the star, of the star is higher than its, than its real position. Real position. And this and takes place due to atmospheric, atmospheric refraction. refraction. But remember, but remember the, layers the layers of the atmosphere, of the atmosphere are, constantly are constantly shifting, shifting and, changing. and changing. So the refraction, so the refraction of, light of light is continuously is changing, changing and the apparent and the position of the star, of the star keeps fluctuating. Keeps fluctuating. The, path the path of light of coming, coming from the star is constantly changing. And so the amount of light that enters our eyes keeps changing. As a, result, As a result, the star, the appears, star appears brighter, brighter sometimes, sometimes and sometimes, and sometimes dimmer, dimmer to us. To us. This, this bright, bright dim, bright dim, bright dim effect, effect makes, us makes us think that the star, the star is, is twinkling. twinkling. Did you understand? <laughs> it's, you think, really think about the perspective. It's like the stars are looking at us as if we were looking at fish. Because yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, is yeah. The same. Exactly like this one. Look at that, right? So let's let next time you want to catch a fish, you you know where to try to catch it, right? So for example, if you have a fish here, it seems to be it seems to be there, but actually it's here, right? And it's it's uh, it, it depends if if it's fresh water or if it's uh, salt water because the refraction won't be the same. Okay, so next time you want to catch something with a net, you, you have you have to go a little bit deeper. Okay, so there was a few uh, one more thing for the eyes. I want to get to the eyes. So this is called. Uh, so you see, in uh, for example, in a pair of binoculars, you don't use mirror 
because they can be uh, mirror can be scratched very easily. You you can you can uh, use total total reflection. See, so have a total reflection here, total reflection there. So you can have a total reflection inside here. That means it cannot escape, cannot escape the glass. Uh, during war, during the Cold War, so I told you, you have a sound channel inside the ocean, so the, the waves, they can talk to each other. You also have a sound channel in the atmosphere because here you have the ozone layer, so it's going to be faster for the sound to travel. Here it's going to be warm and here it's going to be cool. So if there is a noise very, very far away, it can be reflected, 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 and you are not losing the energy in three dimensions using the inverse square law. So during the Cold War, the, the American were spying on, on the Soviet Union, trying if, trying to find out if they were uh, doing nuclear tests, right? The, the, the bomb, the hydrogen bomb, right? So they were listening to them. And the way they were listening to them was with the technology of the time. So there was a balloon, again, a balloon, but the, the balloon was attached to a huge microphone. And the microphone at the time, they looked like saucers, right? That flat disc. One day, and then later on, it was dis disclassified, but at the time it was very classified. One, one day the balloon crashes, the, the saucer uh, uh, fall down, and people saw it. They, they saw a saucer flying from, from the sky. So they thought, oh, you have a terrestrial life over there, right? Some, some try, maybe some uh, alien uh, are trying to invade us. And of course, the military were very, very, very happy about that because they say, okay, like, like that, you know, it stays secret. They wanted that to stay secret. So people thought they, they, they were seeing a UFO. And guess where, what, where, where that happened in, in the US? Roswell. And, and, then, and then came the whole story about the Roswell alien. It was not an alien. They were just spying on, on the Soviet Union at the time. And uh, that's a nice application of the sound channel, right? So it, it was classified for a very long time and, and then it, it became disclassified, but, but nobody paid attention to it. So it's interesting, interesting story. So about the eyes, so about the eyes. So, okay, you have converging lens, diverging lens. You can have the same thing with mirrors. You have here, it's a concave mirror here. And it's a convex mirror there. So this is our eyes. Here we have the, the, the lens. Here, it's like a converging lens. It works also with the liquid there, make things converging. So if you have a normal eye, if, if you look at something, for example, very, very, very far away, it's going to converge at the right place where all the, I forgot what it's called here, the, 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 it's not neuron, it's like cones, you have cones, right? And it's connected to the optical nerve and goes to your brain, everything is fine. However, if you have an eye like I do, so the if you are short-sighted, Short-sighted means that instead of having a nice spherical eye, your eye is more like an egg. It's it's uh, squeezed, right? It's it looks like an ellipse here. It's like an egg. So then, what's going to happen? My image is here, but there is no cone. So then, the image here, you see the light rays will spread out. And, and the thing that I'm trying to look like very, very, very far away, it's going to be all fuzzy. Like you are all fuzzy if I do that. Okay, I'm not even kidding. Everything is fuzzy here. So what do we need? We need a diverging lens that will make the rays diverge a little bit. So now I can hit the cones and now I can see. And what's, why, why is it so expensive? Because you have to make the curve here just the right way. So it's, it's a lot of uh, curving lenses and it's very expensive. So you can buy online $40 glasses, but sometimes, you know, they never fit. In my case, they never fit. So I always end up paying like hundreds of dollars for those uh, lenses.
That's how it works. Now, what's happening when when you get old? When you get old, you uh, you are not able to 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 squeeze, you know, to adjust, right? So this lens that you have in your eyes, they, it can be adjusted with muscles here attached. Okay, so if you try to read something very close, your eyes can adjust because the muscle here can work. So the, the muscle can make the lens thicker, right, when you are trying to, leak, to, to, to read something very close. As you get older, like, and I can testify, okay, I'm not lying to you, everything gets stiffer, okay, everything, including, including the, mus the muscles here. So that means you cannot read well, okay? You cannot adjust as much as you could before. So now the image is, uh, it's missing. It's, it's the opposite. The image will be there. And again, you don't have codes. So you need to have those magnifying glasses here to bring back the image from here to the, to the, to the screen here, which, which, which is made of cones. Is that that interesting? Now you 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 have the opposite of short sighted. You have um, no. I am short sighted. You are far sighted. So it, you don't have to be just old. Some people you cannot read close. So that's also a, a condition. So in that case again, the image will be behind your eyes where there is no cones to 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 record the image. So again, you need those glasses that are cheaper, right, to bring the image from here to there. Yes. Oh. Yes. So uh, far sighted is when you can see far but not close. That means your eye. If you are young, that means your eye is too uh, squeezed, right? It's 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 the opposite than when you are short sighted. Short sighted is too flat, and then far sighted it's too short, squeezed like this. So because it's squeezed, the image is formed there. You have to bring back the image at at the right spot. Is that interesting? So that goes if you are in health. You know you never know uh, what you're gonna end up doing. So near sighted, near sighted, the eye is too flat, so the image is here. So you need to wear those diverging lines to bring the image back on the screen. And here is the opposite. If you are far sighted, the image is here. So you need to wear a converging lens to bring back the image right here on the screen. So optics, you can have an uh, optical instrument. I think you have enough material that you are able to learn on your own. If you have to prepare for the MCAT, you have microscope or telescope. So telescope, when you have something very, very far away, you're going to bring the image close to you. That's going to be very small. And then you have a magnifying glass to make it bigger. And, and here for a microscope, you use two converging uh, lenses and the idea is to make it as big as possible. Yes. Question. Wow. Before before the final. No, no, you, you cannot, I mean, I cannot add more than eight points, ma maximum 10 points, so you can do two. So, one video is one concept. But, but if you do two concepts, you can, but then uh, it's hard to share. Like in, in Canva, some people try to share a video with me and then it's too too big. So it's better to do two video, two concept, and unless you can upload in YouTube and uh, yeah. No, but you do whatever you want. One concept is between three and five points.
more extra points but no more than two concepts you don't have to do two concepts you can do one concept two concepts right the point is how do we get the several points all the points they have to be very good <laughs> It's, it's like three points to three to five points, depend how good it is for each for each concept, and it goes not to test three because test three is only ten percent. It goes to the one one of the tests. Doesn't matter. They all have the same weight, right? So okay, I 